Major Nelson, please. Come on up. It's happening. It's finally happening, ladies and gentlemen. Larry is here. Major Nelson is here. I, I, I cannot believe nice this is you. finally happening. Hold on, hold on. Is this, do we it's, have to do a photo like the president? Awkward photo. Yeah, yeah exactly right. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Gotta um, love it. Anyway, how are you guys doing? We are great. How are you? What's not to love? That's what I like to hear. It's E3 week. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. See, that's you. You. You guys are my very last thing to do. Congratulations. I, I walk my over, friend. get in a taxi, and go right to LAX. I'm going. Yeah. A lot of people are doing that. Thank you for right. making the time right. for you, us. You are the period at the end of my E3 sentence. Good. I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's an exclamation point, I'd say, but. Perhaps Maybe that's just me. Yeah. I'll, well, take, I'll take what going. I can get. Yeah. You're going to tell us the LAX story <laughs> afterwards. So anyway, here we are. Larry, how was your E3? My E3, our E3 was great. You know, we had a nice, we had a nice, we loved doing our uh, briefing. We did it for the first time ever. The Microsoft TV guys were there, right? Oh, yeah. No, we were, we we were watching there. live we from San Francisco. It. Great show. We do the pre-show, the live show, and the post-show. Kindoffunny.com, twitch.com, slash kindoffunny. I think you can take your show on the road, but anyway. <laughs> uh, so we did, our, we did our briefing for the first time over the Microsoft Theater, and it was great. We had about 70, about 7,000 people. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, the place was packed. We had, you know, you, I'm sure you, you watched it, you saw oh, it. Yeah. We, oh, we, yeah. We had a, you had a great conference. We had a fun thank you. We had a really yeah. nice time. A lot of, lot of folks work really hard. I mean, today, I think today was the first meeting for next year's E3 for us. Got to get it going, man. Yeah. I, that's one way to put it. Yeah. Usually, it's when we come back from break in January, I'll get that first email, email or e phone call. January. By then, we're way down the well, pipe. You got it, but I, right. I have no redeemable skills. Right. Fair. They're talking to you about like what you're doing. I'm like, oh man, I got to well, talk like, about we, We've already got the conference. We want it this long. We start having placeholders. So, but we're yeah. So there you go. So obviously, you can't tell me about the meeting you just had for next year's E3. Right. But. For this year's E3, yeah. last year, yes. Where does it start assembling? What do you like? What do you guys start? It, I mean, it starts really broad. The first thing we did last year was, hey, we were at the Galen Center, we're going to go to the Microsoft Theater. Makes sense. So we walked. We did a walkthrough. I mean, everybody knows what the theater looks like. But we walked through. Okay, can we do this? Can we do that. The, to be honest with you, one of the challenges we had this year, which yeah. we knew last year, was the BET Awards are this weekend, and they're loading in right now. So we had to get out. So we were like passing them as they were loading in. Because this is a this is a you know it's a big theater. It's oh, a sure, world class yeah. theater. So next year I think we're hopefully gonna have more we're gonna they're not gonna be there, or they're gonna be there the week before or after, so we'll have a little bit more space. So that was one of the things that you know we did almost right away was okay, we like this. What does it mean to have it there? Okay, we gotta change this, we gotta change that. So it just starts all process. And I guess too, I guess I, everyone knows you. You're Major Nelson. I, I, You're a big deal. I turn on the Xbox, there's your face. There. I get more scared when I turn on the Xbox and I see Jeff Rubenstein. I'm like, why I would is he get there? scared why is, too. What is he doing there? Right. Where, where's what? Larry? Where's Larry? You what? give him a week. Apparently, everyone gets after two weeks. It's like, wait a minute, what's going on? Yeah. And people are canceling their subscriptions. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never turn on this Xbox again. For people who only know you as the guy talking about what's yeah. coming, right? What is your role at Xbox? My role, well, you know, when I joined the Xbox team uh, in 2003. Wow. Good Lord, that was a while ago. Okay, so this yeah. is the original Xbox before 360. Uh, we were right after Xbox Live had its big launch. Uh, the, the, the Xbox Live, the Xbox team, the team that I was on could fit inside your booth. Wow. It was a small team. So I was one of the first 100 or so people. Now we're thousands of people around the world. And I worked on the engineering team and it was like, hey, you know, this is before Twitter, before Facebook, you know, really forums were the only way to do it. And it was about taking feedback and funneling it back into engineering and starting, starting to create that muscle of the conversation of listening to, listening to fans and bringing it, into the, bringing it into the product and so on and so forth. And so now where does that take you? Uh, around the world. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's now, now because I've been at the organization so long, I know a lot of people and I don't have, I mean, I go and I find, hey, let, would it be a great idea if we did this? And I go work, talk to the engineers, and they're like, okay, here's why we can do it, or here's why we can't do it, and I work with them. So I kind of, kind of, I drop in and out of all the, these different organizations and engineering groups to come up with some fun ideas, and I work with the marketing teams and the PR teams. So it's really, I work horizontally. Yeah. The what you see is about 5% of my job. The other 95% of my job is the stuff that no one sees or I can't really talk about future things. Sure. The product development side. So I love working on products that touch millions of people around the world. Is it weird to look back at your career and think about being kind of the first 
face, like the you were you you were all you know Major Nelson Xbox. Right. You were always the one interfacing with the audience, like you yes. said before Twitter, before right. that before was before that was a thing, before right. community managers, before yeah. at blogs, before like all the stuff you get directly from other people. Yeah, you were doing that. Yeah, and I think you are so synonymous with Xbox. Yeah, it's such an awesome lineage, but I can't imagine to look back now and be like when you started doing it, when you started interfacing with people, understanding that would become like the career, or at least right. the career that we see. Right, yeah, you're absolutely right. I look at it, and I, I, I first of all, I never would have thought at that point, I mean, I knew, I knew video games are gonna be big, because we love them. Yeah. We're all gamers, so we're like, we, always, we just kind of, we play, we want to play great games, wherever they are. But, you know, I remember, it was, you know, when we, right after we launched the 360, and it was going really well, and, and I just remember, you know, we had our first million people on Xbox Live, and then we sold our first 20 million Xbox 360s, and I was like, holy cow, this is a huge <laughs> business. And then we became a billion dollar business, and it was like, oh my god, yeah, this is a- Yeah, billion dollars. It was, so anyway, so I, you're right, I look back, and I never would have, I knew it was gonna be big. Yeah. This big, no way. Yeah. I mean, so it, it, in fact, I know that if I was starting it today, I don't think, I, I don't think it would happen. I don't know what I would do. So I, I, I happen to be at the right place at the right time. Absolutely. So and right, right now is a great time. I feel like this conference was, in my opinion, it was the best Microsoft conference I've ever thank seen. Thank you. Having a Gears and a Halo announced. Yeah, that Gears pump show. fake. Did you like that? Yeah, <laughs> there's the crimson. <laughs> it's a fun Whoa, go. mobile game. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Strategy <laughs> game. Oh, Gears 5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I loved the set. I loved the production of the entire thing. Thank you. Having all the Xboxes on stage, was there any plan to do something with those that didn't work out, or was that more just like an aesthetic choice? No, no, I mean, if you were in, I mean, I don't know how much it came through on the, on the, on the stream, but I mean, all, those were supporting whatever was whatever the speaker was talking about. So when Ashley came on and talked about Game Pass, we had some Game Pass uh, assets on there. Cool. So they were there, but we, you know, it was one of those things like, you know what? We're video gamers. Those are game consoles. Why don't we have them up there? I yeah. Mean, right. So it just kind of made sense. Cool. See, Tim had been predicting for a long time. Yeah. That Master Chief Collection would be getting a battle royale mode. Right. So he started trying to count the oh, Xbox like There's on a hundred there. We're going down. Do I, I, Jeff Rubenstein, Jeff counted them, because I remember we went on stage. I think there was 80 or 90. I don't so think it was close. quite 100. So Very close. It was close. But Great idea even. for next year. You can take that one. I'll let, I'll let three or four. Yeah, I don't know yeah. if you've heard about this. Battle Royales it's are popular. I think it may be big. Yeah. I think it may be big. <laughs> Time's going to tell. Everybody's doing time. it. Everybody's doing it. What's now with a few days behind and everybody else going to, what's your takeaway from the Xbox conference. What did you think of it? You know, our takeaway is, you know, one of the big things, of course, is we added five new studios to the first and, party. And portfolio. I can't tell you how awesome that is. Yeah. As somebody who, wa I always talk about this, you know, I, on the internet, I don't know if you've heard, yeah. a lot of people think I'm a PlayStation fanboy. No, no, they've told me. And they're, oh, they, okay. they, were, they were actually angry at me because I was coming on the show, right? <laughs> All you do is talk Nintendo and PlayStation. Yeah. And I said, well, let's, I'm sure we can, I'm sure he'll be balanced. Forget about my state of decay love. Forget right. about that. Forget, Forget about, about that. All of that. I beat Cuphead. He beat Cuphead. For, throw it out. You know well what I mean? Done. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank well, you. Thank you. I haven't even beat Cuphead. Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> you know, he's coming for your job now. <laughs> now. Here's what I need you to do. I'll come back next year. Yeah. I need you to play it again and beat it with the adaptive controller. Oh, man. Right? I'll try. I don't know how. I don't know what. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. Anyway. Get Steven to come over. He'll yeah. Uh, no, I always say that. I think out of every company right now, you guys are the ones I find myself rooting for the most, cheering you that on. That means we're behind. Well, no, not that, <laughs> but I mean, I, I, I think you're not getting the credit you deserve this generation. We never will. Yeah. You know, we've seen this. I'll never forget this. It was, was it 2009 when we announced Connect, um, and we had, we had we had the Beatles on stage. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay, you know, and there's always a, somebody wins E3 and somebody, I'm like, we had we had the Beatles on stage. We had all this great. We had all the great games and everything else. And we and we we didn't win E3. I'm like, we had the Beatles on stage. I don't understand this. <laughs> so it's like we we know that there's a different yardstick for the different developers. Right. I, you know the Nintendo guys are great. They you know I've got my Switch right here in case I want to play Fortnite. Yep. 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 Um, so I mean those guys are great. I talked to Reggie the other day. The guys over at PlayStation they're doing a great. They're executing. They've had tremendous success this right. this time around. But uh, you know, it's funny with us. I think it's maybe because I, I don't know, but I think it's maybe because I learned this from working at Xbox when I meet with other groups at Microsoft. Microsoft's a huge company, and when I meet some of the other groups, I meet the the Windows team, like the PC driver team. Oh, I love my PC driver. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, these are the, the, the they work on a product that you have to use Windows. 
we're the product you want to use because you want to have fun. So yeah. I think people like, oh, I hate Windows because I have to use it at work or I'm doing email or I don't want to do this PowerPoint for work. So I, I don't know if some of that anxiety and, and, and whatnot drifts over to Xbox, but you know, we just want to do the best we can for gamers. Well, and that's what and that's what it comes back to is I think you have been doing that with backwards compatibility, with Game Pass, yeah. with the Fortnite stuff. With the crossplay with Nintendo, you with know how to link Minecraft. your accounts. I put a link on. Twitter oh, I have. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you know this. I had to. I had to make my own. I had to make a new account. No. Yeah. I had to go make a new account because you know, if you play it on Xbox, we'll take care of you. I've noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing. Damn. of, Like we're using a lot of jokes here. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> We're joking around about it, but it is that you guys are making decisions that are pro-consumer and pro-gamer. Well, this is, and this is really Phil. Um, Phil is an, un un an unbelievable leader. I mean, I have worked for some incredible people at Xbox. I mean, Jay Allard is, is one, of, one of the greatest people who taught me so much about gamers, customers, the console business, and how to work with a Microsoft. And Phil is fantastic, and he's just, you know, why are we doing this? Are we doing something? How does it work for the customers? And, Jay and Phil kind of always have the same approach, which is, if you don't know what to do, you're like, you're looking at a project, you're working on something, you don't know what to do, think of it as a gamer and do what they would want. Yeah. You know, because you know, they'll, they'll, they'll give you the goodness and the business will clear out. Game Pass, great example. Everybody wants to have this collection of games you can play for one low price a month, and we're doing it. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, so you're yeah. making all these decisions. Well, I'm trying to get back to the original point I'm you're sorry. making. No, I don't care. You're here to have fun. You survived E3. <laughs> kick, Almost. Kick up your sh Now, Tim will steal your Do you like those? Tim's Dude. very upset he doesn't I'm have these. I'm so shoes. jealous. <laughs> now, here's the thing. They glow in the dark. Yeah, they glow in the dark. And they have little Can we bring the house? The E3, can we turn <laughs> off the lights? God. <laughs> but so jealous. Back to it of... I love the fact that you're firing on all these cylinders and then building for the future with these five studios. Yeah. Because that was the thing of seeing Phil since last E3 put out you know interviews where it was like we understand the importance of exclusives. We understand we're gonna we're I, we're, fo we're right. looking into that. We're going to focus. Right. Because on that. because people forget, maybe they do. I mean, certainly exclusives, this great game, but really the role of first party is to showcase the hardware and showcase the services. So that when you look at that, you're like, because we all remember the original Halo, you know, yeah. and that showed off the original Xbox. So, and Phil knows this, and he, that's why we went out, we, we were making investments with the new studio down here in Santa Monica, and the, and the, and the acquisitions that we've made globally in yeah. Canada and over in the UK. So, I'm just so excited. I met with some of those teams, and they're just, they're great. I'm so excited to go over and spend some time with them and see what they got going on. I love that that was announced at E3 as well, because that's yep. normally that's the type of thing that's reserved for like a blog post or you know something like like a, a Nintendo Direct or the the Xbox. Right. Inside uh, Xbox. Inside Xbox, that type of stuff. But I feel like putting it at E3 shows an importance there and shows a right. Th 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 it's a priority in the people. that we're listening, which right. is we're listening the biggest Xbox there. message. Well, we when you get Phil on stage and you have that slide behind him that shows the original studios and then. There's all the boxes of people like, what, what, Ninja Theory, what? You know, yeah. and they just started filling in. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, it was it right. It's it, because people we know we've got the largest audience at that moment, and we want to stand there and tell you, yes, we hear you. We're making the investments. I mean, Phil has told me many, many times. You know, when he goes and talks to the board and, and CEO and Satya, it's like, what do you need to make to to make Xbox successful? And you know, not any, but normally in business, you're like, okay, what's my budget? And the response is, what do you need? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's the kind of company we work at where we've got this incredible, incredible leadership and obviously the incredible success from the different parts of the business that help. And, and the things that we can lean on from Azure, you know, to all these other parts of the business that are just extraordinary that build us up. Now, you know, when people want to get mean or whatever, they'll talk about the fact, well, where are the exclusives? Where are the exclusives, oh, right? Okay. You got it, you had Halo, Gears. Yeah. You know, you yeah. showed it there, now these studios. For these studios, and I'm not trying to box you in here on stuff, how long do you think it's before we see fruit from that? Well, I mean, it, it's hard to say. I mean, I was talking with Guillaume from, um, from uh, the, the game studio up in Canada that's working on We Happy Few, and Bullshit, right? I said, I'm really excited to see you. He said, no, 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 no. Not until we ship, because you know you know what it's like when the game developers get in their mode to ship. You can't go to their studio. They are cranking away. They've got to hit this deadline. So um, they just said they're just excited to have the resources. They don't have to sure. worry about certain sure. things anymore, like network infrastructure, buying computers. This is what we can bring as a large company. Get out of the way. 
make the greatest game you can make. Yeah. You don't have to worry about are we gonna make pay are we gonna make payroll this week? We got that. Yeah. You know, uh, you know all those all those infrastructure operational things we got. World class. Well, that's why I'm so excited for Undead Labs being such a state of decay yeah. fan. Even when State of Decay 2 was being worked on and you guys like doubled down of like, all right, you know, you know, we're gonna promote it, it's gonna be Game Pass, we're gonna get behind it. Right. Now to have it 100 percent they are an exclusive studio. Right. I'm really excited to see what they do with Microsoft's back, backing, funding. Hey, let's make this awesome product. Yeah, they're a great studio. I mean, all the studios have, I mean, I know they're older, but the rare guys, I oh, love yeah. those guys. Anyway. So outside of all that, what was your favorite part of E3? Um, I, I think it's this. It's being able to walk around and talk to the fans because E3, is, this is the second E3 we've had fans. Previously, it's, you know, it's great to do business, but it's more important that we get to connect with the fans. You guys have been to Gamescom, right? He has. Yeah, I have. You know, that's yeah. bananas, right? Oh, yeah, Band -Aids. yeah. And it kind of has a little bit of feeling of that around here. It's not as packed. Um, but uh, that's what I like. I like just talking to the fans and, and them telling us. Because you know, we know. They're not shy about telling you what, you, what, you know, what you're all about. Yeah, and they're not shy about telling <laughs> them, which is great. Yeah. We want to hear that conversation. It's great to have that conversation with them. So is your E3, do you get to play games, or is it mainly taking meetings? Uh, it's mostly meetings. I'll get to play games when I get back. Like, I had okay. some of our team say, oh, we want you to come by. I'm like, no. This time is to see people you can normally see. I can fly up to your studio and spend the day with you to look at your whatever build. Here, go see, go see people that, that you normally wouldn't see. I'll come to you. Yeah. Because that's what I want to do. What do you think was the biggest announcement you guys had at your show? Well, I think it, without a doubt, was the increase of the first party portfolio. You know, when you look at that announcement um, and what it means, because it has such far-reaching effects across the business. You know, Game Pass and the work we're doing on Game Pass is great. You know, we started Game Pass a year ago. It's been tremendously successful. Uh, we're doing the fast start, uh, the new technology, which is not just Game Pass. It's, it's all the things, uh, you know, all the games across it. But, but without a doubt, it has to be the first party portfolio. Which, you know, when I, when I learned about that before the show, I, I mean, I was like, Yes, I knew Phil had it because he kind of was giving me a couple of nods. We were playing State of Decay. Phil and I were playing State of Decay uh, uh, a few weeks ago, and we were kind of he kind of made some things. I don't actually want to know too much sure. about our business sure. going in because I don't want I'm, I want to be surprised. Yeah, I love being surprised, just like you guys. What's the uh, impact of the Xbox One X been? I feel like it came out, yeah, world's most powerful system, and it found its audience. Yeah, and, it, you it, know, it, Tim and I both use them at home. That's what we play our Xboxes yeah. on and stuff. And you, it feels Fortnite, like, you play Fortnite. I have a, no, well, it, it's a whole rigmarole. Is what's, that the, I was, what's the problem? I know people that can fix this. Well, yeah, I do too, epic. The it, HDMI goes in the back. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, the Xbox One X has been tremendously successful for us. Well, you know, we, we set out a very clear goal. We wanted world's most powerful console. We wanted people to understand it is. And when every time a multi-platform game comes out, you see those A-B comparisons and the, and the console holds its own very well. Yeah. Now, you keep making jokes about Fortnite. You're obviously referencing Switch coming out, PlayStation 4 users like myself who've played on Fortnite before can't bring their Epic account to Nintendo. Yeah. Xbox accounts that have been used with Epic can go to PC, can go to uh, Switch. Yeah. Arguably so can PlayStation accounts to PC. Yeah. But there's this console thing here. Do you think it's as crazy as I think it is? That that's the, the deal here? That I have, a, I have if, if you are, play, I've seen this story told a million times so far on my Twitter. I'm a, play, I'm a PC player. I bought the Fortnite you know, $150 edition. I, I've done all these different battle passes. I've leveled this up. I went to play with PlayStation 4, my friends, a month, came back. I'm back on PC, and now I can't link it to Switch because of this yeah. thing. Do you, does it boggle your mind? Because Xbox is doing the opposite of that, where Xbox uh, is saying, all right, cool, Minecraft anywhere. You know, it, it, it does confuse me, Yeah. but I also don't know. There's a reason, and that's what we can't, we don't know. So I don't know if that's a technical reason. Yeah. Is it a legal reason? Is it a compliance reason? Or what is? I, we just don't know what it is. It is a little puzzling. Yeah. Because um, the problem has been solved. Sure. Right? And that's the thing, I guess, is more for you to speak about now that you're done making your jokes and your jabs. If you dial it back, when Xbox was starting to talk about this, and you were talking about Minecraft going everywhere, and I know there's a much other free-to-play cross-platform games I'm not talking about, and not even just free-to-play, but games that can be played across multiple systems. What was the tipping point for you guys to say, you know what, this is best for gamers. This is something we need to get out well, of. Well, this gets back to what Phil has said, and he said during our briefing, which is, look, we want to have the great games wherever the gamers are. 
You know, Xbox Live is a tremendously robust network. It's incredibly stable, it's incredibly flexible. And having that as the bedrock for all of the services to plug into, whether you're playing, you know, Minecraft is, is kind of another service on top. Yeah. Um, so, so having that is, is gets back to what Phil's saying, which is, hey, we want to have great games and great experiences wherever they are, whether they're on mobile, whether they're on a different device. We like having Xbox everywhere. And it's interesting, right? Because I think it was we, on Kind of Funny Games Daily last week, but now it's just been a blur. Maybe Friday, Thursday, there was this article we were talking about from Variety, Brian Crescente, uh, talking to Yves Gilmont about how Ubisoft was basically saying, one more console generation, and then, and granted, I remember saying this last console generation, right. one more console generation, then everything's everywhere. But he was talking to the fact that what gamers want and where we're headed is yeah. ubiquity. You can yeah. play the game on your phone, on your TV, anywhere yeah. you want and be ready to go. And yeah. I feel like you guys are embracing that Why? while PlayStation's worried about it right now. Yeah, I mean, we, we, have the, we have the unique ability to have world's largest gaming platform, Windows. Yeah. And having that, you know, the Windows ecosystem over here and having Xbox, and we made, you saw those connections being made with Windows 10, got the Xbox app and the Play Anywhere. So there's all these elements that are kind of being added on when, when they make sense. Um, so we're in a unique position to be able to leverage that and kind of what we're doing now and what you're seeing is we're stomping on the gas and going, let's go. Yeah. So that, that's kind of what you're seeing and because we know where we want to go. Phil has pointed us in the direction. And it's out that way. And it's in the direction. Future. It's in the direction of fate. Link, no, Excelia. So something I love that Xbox has been doing is playing nice with others and all of this. You see it with Fortnite and all that. I got to ask the question. If you could have a Microsoft character in Super Smash Brothers, who would it be? Um, I, you'd have, probably have to say Master Chief. Yeah? Yeah, I, I think it would have to be. I mean, that's only because of his lineage and everything that Chief has done. Um, I, I'm probably going to have to say Master Chief. Good answer. I mean, maybe, you know, I can't really put Ori in there, right? Yeah. <laughs> you can good, I'll let you. I don't know what that looks like. <laughs> By the way, have you seen the new Ori game? Yeah. Oh my god, I, pl I played it. Beautiful. It is, it plays phenomenal. Yeah. I can't wait for that game. Major Nelson. Yes. You're a Georgia peach. Thank you so much for coming. I by. am so glad that we have finally knocked down. We, this is one thing we can check off our list. Now you gotta come to San Francisco, do all the shows proper. I have, this is a proper show. Oh, I know, but here, you know. I'm Isn't it? I'm turning your audience. I know. Get out of here. <laughs> Go to the airport, ladies and gentlemen. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank hey, you very much.